This is video 38 uh, from digital-university.org. In this video we want to discuss a little bit about supernodes and how we can use this technique uh, for solving circuits that incorporate both a voltage source and a current source. And we're going to draw upon techniques that we had developed um, in our previous videos. If, if you perhaps just found us on YouTube, if you go to the website uh, there you'll find the playlist for all the videos so far that we have in this series. Okay, in this video we want to consider this circuit where we have a current source of 6 amps and another one of 4 amps and a voltage source of 12 volts and then we have these three resistors of 2, 4, and 10 ohms. Now when we look at it we realize that down here there's like a single node at the bottom part of the circuit and in fact this single node is grounded. And then here we have another node where this branch, this branch, this branch, and this branch all comprise this single node here. And we'll say that that node is at a voltage of V1 volts. And then over here we have a second node for this branch, this branch, this branch, and this branch. And the second node will say is at a voltage of V2 volts. Now how do we handle the fact that we have a voltage source here? Um, what we do is for the moment you would just ignore the voltage source and we're going to treat this whole upper section here as if it was just kind of one giant, or I should say one fused super mode. In fact, what we can do is to help our imagination for the moment, just remove that now we just have one big super node up here. We just sort of fused the node 1 and node 2 together. So that's what we're going to do to get the problem set up. Just ignore the presence of the voltage source for a moment. But looking at our setup here, we realize this, that here is voltage V2, and then to get to voltage V1, we have to increase voltage V2 by 12 volts. So we know then that V2 plus 12 equals V1. We have that relationship there. Okay, now when we're treating this as a super node, again using the format technique that we developed in our previous videos, we're going to consider the current flow for the super node and what we do is we consider the current flow at each end of it, the V1 end and the V2 end. So looking at this then we would say well we have V1 and we have resistor 4 and resistor 10 attached to that V1 node so we would have 1 fourth plus one-tenth. Now here for this resistor this end of it is at potential V2 so we'd say minus one-tenth V2 and we'll consider the currents in just a moment. Let's go over here now to node number two at voltage V2. Here we have a two ohm resistor and the 10 ohm resistor. So we're going to write it all together in one equation regarding this uh, so-called super node. So we're going to have plus V2 times 1 over 2 plus 1 over 10 and then this end, the 10 ohm resistor, is at voltage V1 so we would have minus 1 over 10 
times V1. And that equals, well now looking at it from the point of view of a super node, on this end of the super node, there's six amps of current going into the super node. Here there's four amps of current leaving the super node. That means we have a net of two amps flowing into the super node. So as the current is flowing into the super node, so write the two on this side of the equation as a positive number. Now if it was the other way around, if this was six amps going out and four amps going in, so we had a net of two amps flowing out of the super node, then we have a minus sign by it. Okay, now here we see we have one fourth V1 and one tenth V1. Here we have minus one tenth V1. So these cancel. This leaves one fourth times V1. Here we have minus one tenth V2. Here we have plus one tenth V2. So we have plus one half times V2 equals two. So from our super node, we wrote it as one big super equation, incorporating both ends of the node into a single equation, so to speak. So this is what we get. And we also had this relation to begin with, or we could say that V1 minus V2 equals 12. So here we have two unknowns to solve for, voltage V1 and voltage V2, and we have two equations. This we can multiply both sides of the equation by 4, and we will have V1 plus 2 times V2 equals 8, and here we have V1 minus V2 equals plus 12. We don't even have to bother using the determinant technique to determine V1 and V2. We just subtract these. We'll have 2 subtract negative 1. That's 2 plus 1. So we have 3 times V2 equals 8 minus 12 is negative 4. So V2 equals minus four-thirds volts. And what about V1? V1 will equal V2 plus 12. Oh, that's minus 1.33 plus 12. Sorry, put this in better focus. V1 equals V2 plus 12. There's V2 plus 12. That equals plus 10.67 volts. So there we have determined then V1 and V2. So what we did was just ignored the voltage source and kind of fused these together into one super node, thinking of it as a super node with a V1 end and a V2 end. And then we went and set up the equation for the super node by working with the V1 end to give us this part of the equation, then with V2 end to give us this part of the equation, and then we looked at all the currents that were flowing into and out of the super node to give us that part of the equation. And all of this eventually reduced to this. Then, and for each time you use a super node technique, there's going to be some relationship between the different voltage components of the different ends of the super node. Here we have that V2 plus 12 volts gets us up to the voltage of V1. So that gives us another equation to work with. So we ended up with an equation from the super node with two unknowns, 
we also had this relationship. So we had two equations, two unknowns to solve for, and there they are, v1 and v2. So let's go to here. v1 is at plus 10.67 volts, and v2 is minus four-thirds, or 1.33 volts. So let's see if we can quickly now determine what the currents are through these resistors. What we know is that with this type of arrangement in the circuit, with a 6 ohm or the 6 amp current source, a 12 volt voltage source, and a 4 amp uh, current source, and the resistors incorporated in this fashion, we know that this will be at a voltage of 10.67 volts, this will be at a voltage of minus 1.33 volts, so let's determine the currents. Here, for this resistor, this of course is at zero volts, this is grounded, so that's equal to plus 10.67 divided by 4, that's 2.67 amps, and that's going down. What about for this resistor, I2? This is at a negative voltage. This is at zero volts. That's at negative volts. Let's just determine the numerical value for it. It's going to be that voltage divided by this. The value of the resistor, 1.33 divided by 2. That will be the amperage for that. And that is flowing upward. This is at zero volts, that's at a negative voltage. So it's going upward through this resistor. And finally, we have the 10 ohm resistor. Here, this end of it is at plus 10.67 volts. This is at minus 1.33 volts. The difference in voltage across that then is going to be 10.67 plus 1.33 volts. The difference is this minus this, that's a negative number, so it's going to be 10.67 plus 1.33 divided by 10. This is 12 divided by 10. That equals 1.2 amps. And that is going in this direction. From the higher voltage to the negative voltage. So that's it. We solved the problem. Um, and again, this is an introduction to the super node technique. Now what we're going to do in the uh, next video is again another illustration of using super nodes. We're going to start off with this circuit, at least set up the equations for determining the node voltages. Then what we're going to do is replace this resistor with a voltage source, and then see how we can analyze the current once they made that modification. So come back, join us for that video, and let's see if we can solve some more problems.